You're watching Tag TV. Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a show where we will provide you fresh insights into South Asia's geopolitical, strategic and security situation. Let's take a look at the headlines first. Pakistan backed terrorists targeting migrant workers in Jammu and Kashmir. India's fight against narco-terrorism continues. And Islamic religious leader condemns global terrorism and extremism. Pakistan's hostile intentions towards India have intensified, specifically targeting vulnerable migrant workers who come to Jammu and Kashmir to earn their livelihood and strive for a brighter future. Behind these violent attacks lies Pakistan's deliberate agenda to disrupt peace and progress in the region. Come explore this gripping story with us as we uncover the real impact of terror and witness the unwavering courage of those who won't be silenced. A report. On July 13, unidentified terrorists targeted three migrant workers in Shopia district of Jammu and Kashmir, leaving them seriously injured. The victims identified as Anwar Thokar, Hiralal and Pantu hails from Bihar. Police suspect lashkar e terror outfit to be behind the attack. In another incident, terrorists targeted two non-local workers in Anantnag district. A large number of migrant workers are working in different parts of Jammu and Kashmir as they are engaged in the development projects and other works. The local economy runs on the backs of an estimated 1 million strong migrant worker population that comes from states such as Uttar Pradesh, Bihar and West Bengal and earns a living as masons, carpenters, laborers and embroiderers and even in gold ornament shops. The targeting of known locals is directly linked to an emerging wave of identity politics in Kashmir since after the abrogation of Article 370 and Article 35A in August 2019. The scrapping of spatial status has fueled apprehensions among locals of an impending demographic alteration of the valley. Terrorist groups such as the Jashi Muhammad, Hezbul Mujahideen and Lashkar-e Taiba are capitalizing on such fears and issuing threats, even if it means wreaking Kashmir's local economy that is heavily dependent on tourism, agriculture and handicrafts. Such targeted attacks also show the growing frustration among the Pakistan-backed terrorists. The frustration of Pakistan, ISI and the government is showing now that the trained terrorists and militants that they had kept sending in since the 90s have been totally eliminated in Kashmir Valley, barring a few. And those few also do not want to come and take, arm, take up arms against the security forces, fearing them for their lives. Therefore, what they have done is now, they have sent messages across to their underground and overground workers to do these targeted killings in uh, an unrelenting uh, way, in a way, so that to give an impression that Kashmir Valley is not normal. For the past few years, the security forces in Jammu and Kashmir have taken a tough stand against terrorism, stone pelters and hooligans. It does not suit the agenda of neighboring Pakistan and she wants to create an atmosphere of uncertainty by killing non-Muslims, migrant workers and even security forces.
Many terror groups have been generating their revenue by drug trafficking. In Pakistan, a large number of these terror outfits who are infiltrating into India have been engaged in supplying drugs. The security forces in India's Jammu and Kashmir have unearthed a racket of narco-terrorism and several arrests have been made in recent days. We have the special report. Iran, Afghanistan and Pakistan. The Golden Crescent is today the world's leading region of heroin production. Up until recently, opium and heroin were smuggled to the West and other parts of the world from Iran and Afghanistan. But since early 1980s, these activities shifted to Pakistan due to revolution in Iran and the war in Afghanistan. Smuggling illicit drugs from this part of the region is a major source of revenue for terror outfits who have been operating from Pakistani soil. They supply banned drugs into Jammu and Kashmir to make the Kashmiri youth addicted to it and lure them to take up arms. The supply of illegal drugs in the Union Territory is a source to finance for the local militants. In Baramulla district, the Jammu and Kashmir police, along with central paramilitary, have launched a campaign to fight against narco-terrorism and have apprehended over 300 drug peddlers. Police have revealed that the supply of drugs and arms by terrorists poses a challenge to them. बारामुला जिला जो है ये एक सरहदी इलाका है और उस सरहद के होने के वजह से जो है क्रॉस बॉर्डर स्मगलिंग ड्रग्स और वॉर लाइक स्टोर्स की ये हमारे लिए एक बहुत बड़ा चैलेंज रहता है इसी चैलेंज को मुंहतोड़ जवाब देने के लिए बारामुला पुलिस ने पिछले छह महीनों में जो है एक वेल प्लान्ड कैंपेन के तहत और एक मिशन मोड में जो है आज तक तकरीबन 187 एफआईआरस एनडीपीएस एक्ट में रजिस्टर किए हैं जिसमें 284 ड्रग पेडलर्स को हमने आज तक हवालात में दिया हुआ है साथ ही साथ 34 ऐसे नामी गिरामी हैबिचुअल हार्डकोर ड्रग पेडलर्स को हमने पिट एनडीपीएस और पीएसए के तहत बुक किया हुआ है जो बहुत बड़े पैमाने पे ड्रग पेडलिंग के घोरक धंधे में मुलवस थे टोटल जो है हमने आज तक 318 ड्रग पेडलर्स को कानूनन कार्रवाई करते हुए जेरबंद किया हुआ है और इस पूरी कार्रवाई के चलते हुए आज पूरे यकीन के साथ मैं कहता हूं कि बारामुला में ड्रग्स का जो प्रभाव था उसमें भारी मात्रा में जो है गिरावट आई है और ये जो हमारी कार्रवाई है ये बदस्तूर चलती रहेगी और हमारा मकसद है कि बारामुला को हम एक ड्रग फ्री डिस्ट्रिक्ट जल्द से जल्द डिक्लेयर करें Since the abrogation of Article 370 and Article 35A in Jammu and Kashmir, terror-related incidents have taken a sharp decline. Unfortunately, Pakistan is making all possible attempts to increase the supply of illegal drugs in the Union territory to make the Kashmiri youth addicted. On many occasions, Pakistan is using drones to supply drugs in the Union territory. Sources reveal that armed militant groups in Jammu and Kashmir have created a demand for funding to support their operations. And drug trafficking provides a significant source of revenue. The proceeds from illegal drug trade can be used to purchase weapons, fund training and recruitment activities and support their operational expenses. One of the prime uh, tools of Pakistan's policy is to destabilize its entire neighborhood. So one of the things that it does is basically to spread this culture of narcotics among the youth. Afghan Afghanistan has experienced it. It's a serious problem within Pakistan itself. And now, of course, slowly but surely, they are trying it in India as well. And it's not that slowly any longer. The efforts are quite extensive. See, among the many prongs, a destabilized society where a substantial sector of the youth is hooked to narcotics is helpful to Pakistan's strategy because once you are addicted, then for money you are able to and willing to do a lot of things. And this is how Pakistan has ensured that places it wants to infect with terrorism have survived. So with very small, modest sums of money, people will take up arms, they will conduct 
individual acts of terror and serve to destabilize that particular region. So this is an extremely important part of Pakistan's uh, strategies toolkit to destabilize India. The Indian security forces have taken several steps to tackle narco-terrorism in Jammu and Kashmir. It has launched anti-drug operations and has increased its efforts to intercept drug shipments and arrest those involved in the drug trade, both within Jammu and Kashmir and along the border with Pakistan. Besides intelligence gathering, the security forces are using the latest technology like unmanned aerial vehicles to reduce the flow of drugs into the region. In recent decades, the world has seen growing religious extremism and terrorism, which has led to global conflicts. Only a few countries like India, which has strong diversity of religion, stood as a role model for global peace and integrity. Recently, Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdul Karim al Issa, the Secretary General of the Muslim World League, visited India and raised concerns over functioning of global terror outfits. We have this report. India is one among many countries which has suffered due to international terrorism and extremism. The country has faced several major terror attacks in the past few decades, be it Pulwama terror attack in 2019, Uri attack in 2016, Mumbai terror attacks in 2008, or Parliament terror attack in 2001. India has lost many of its citizens due to terrorism. Bearing the worst when it comes to terrorism, India has always been the one to raise the issue at the international platforms. Radicalism and terrorism still remain a pressing danger for the whole world. India has been suffering due to safe haven to terrorists in its neighborhood. World's deadliest terror outfits beat Al-Qaeda, Tehrik-e Taliban Pakistan, Hezbul Mujahideen or Lashkar-e Taiba they have been receiving shelter, training, financing in Pakistan. The presence of these outfits has created unrest in entire South Asia. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdul Karim Al Isa, a prominent Islamic leader and preacher from Saudi Arabia, during his recent visit to India, critically condemned terrorism and those who are supporting these outfits in the name of religion. طبعا هذه الحركات والتنظيمات هي حركات إرهابية لا تمثل إلا نفسها. Of course, these uh, terrorist uh, organizations that you have uh, mentioned, these terrorist organizations don't represent except themselves. They have no religion or no nation or country. Uh, of course, we completely confront and combat these ideas and pre present their truth to the world. Uh, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has one of the strongest platforms to combat such ideas and being very successful in uh, overcoming them and hitting their ideologies and their deviated ideas uh, in the right manner. We at the Muslim World League are working on uprooting these ideas from existence. Of course, the face-off or confrontation of these ideas uh, is not uh, um, based on uh, uh, army might or history. These ideas, these movements, uh, they're terroristic, they don't, they don't have these elements. They are ideological idea, uh, uh, ideas. So that's why we have to face them off in the ideological field and approve these ideas. Countries like Pakistan and Afghanistan, which are the breeding grounds for terrorism in the world today, are also known for mistreating their own citizens, especially ethnic minorities. In Pakistan, not only the minority Hindus, Christian and Sikhs are being targeted, but the Baloch and Sindhis, who have been demanding their rights, are being targeted. In Afghanistan, the Taliban government continues to suppress the women and keep them isolated by enforcing the Sharia law. India which has the world's second largest Muslim population, remains peaceful and the community is enjoying their rights. 
Muhammad Al Isa praises India for protecting its minorities and keeping them away from joining any international terror group. نعم التقينا بعدد من القيادات الدينية الإسلامية الهندية وأيضا. We have a friendship with the Islamic leadership here in India, who we have met even previously, and these Islamic leaders represent the the wisdom of the religion and also the wisdom of having outreach with others, and they they represent the true understanding of the religion. Religion. These Muslims who are live in India, they are proud of their constitution, and also they have this very brotherly relationship with their fellow citizens, and of course we said. The issues that might have some differences. These issues, of course, should uh, be uh, discussed within the constitution and in the framework of love and uh, brotherhood that they share. And of course, Islam rejects any uh, ideas that promote clash uh, between the people and also all ideas that uh, promote terrorism or extremism. <laughs> Terrorism continues to create fear in the minds of the ordinary people through unwanted forces. They are spreading violence, riots, kidnappings, fighting, bomb explosions and even wars. Many state functionaries are also hand in gloves with those terror organizations to use them as proxies against its opponents. Such acts create unrest leading to economic and social loss to the society. India, being the world's largest democracy with great secular values, plays a pivotal role in condemning terrorism and extremism at the international level. Let's now talk about the persecution of minorities in the Islamic Republic of Pakistan. When this country was carved out of India in 1947, the population of non-Muslims was around 23%. Today, it is somewhere between 3 to 4 percent. Despite this drastic decline, the Pakistan government has failed to protect the people from the minority community. The crimes against them have rather risen in recent years. We have this report. Pakistan is insecure for non-Muslims. They are being discriminated, targeted, forcefully converted and their places of worship are being destroyed. In a recent incident that shook the world, a 150-year-old Mari Mata temple in Karachi was raised to ground. The temple had been the target of land grabbers and developers for years now. Another temple in Kashmir area of the country's Sindh province was attacked on the same day with rocket launchers. The temple belonging to the Bagri Hindu community opens annually for religious services. Religious places belonging to the minority community in Pakistan are frequently being targeted by Islamic hardliners. Human rights activists have accused the Pakistani establishment of not protecting the minorities and allowed them to be systematically targeted. Pakistan was built thinking with that is a Puritan state. So Puritan states means that the, the, the state can actually uh, uh, can um, sort of uh, become sort of a re use religion as a control the people and mindset and the growth, the whole thinking about the people can be controlled by the religion. So they are, so the, the dominating or establishment, I call it in our Pakistan, in our country, we is generally military. Military is the most powerful institute within the state and they are the establishment. And for them, using religion as a weapon to control the people. And so they have changed the whole country's mindset by the education system, by the, the cultural uh, mindset uh, the, to make it that, that they can make, people can stop thinking, but people stop modernizing and secular. Inherently, the people of Sindh, people of Balochistan or Punjab or the, the other states, they inherently are people secular. They are not uh, sort of hostile people. It's the way 70 years of institutionalization has really put a, a really a radical impact on the people. Not just Hindus, the Sikhs, Christians, Ahmadiyyas and other religious minorities in Pakistan are facing persecution. 
A report by the Human Rights Commission of Pakistan titled A Breach of Faith, Freedom of Religion or Belief in 2021-22 raised concerns over forced conversion, religious extremism and draconian blasphemy law that targets minorities in the country. It called for an urgent legislation to criminalize forced convergence and state action to counter sectarian violence. The Human Rights Commission of Pakistan also called for re-evaluating the quotas for religious minorities in education and employment. Human rights experts blame Pakistan for making amendments in its constitution to target minorities. There were multiple amendments in the constitution in 1980s when the dictator Muhammad Ziaul Haq make the all constitution as a Islamizations and many changes he made according to the Sharia law, the blasphemy laws, amendments, article uh, 295A, B and C was just to target the innocents and the religious minorities and it is a sword that was hanging all the time on the heads of minorities and 3,000 people have been victimized regarding minorities and other innocents. Many have been killed during the court trials. Many are in the in prisons and many have been killed during the uh, just a lagging time and even in the police stations they have been killed. A large number of political activists belonging to the minority community from Pakistan have been raising their issues on various international platforms. Every year, they hold protests in front of the United Nations to seek justice, but the atrocities on minorities in Pakistan are aggregating year on year. An urgent international attention is needed to protect the religious minorities in Islamic Republic of Pakistan. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Shivangi Vishra signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care. You're watching Tag TV.